Hi, and welcome to this video of Dynamics 365 Talk, where I'll be discussing the integration between LinkedIn Sales Navigator and Dynamics 365 Customer Engagement. But before we get started, I just want to introduce myself. My name is Dion Taylor. I am a Microsoft Business Applications MVP. Feel free to check out my blog at d365goddess.com, follow me on Twitter at d365goddess, or just connect with me on LinkedIn by scanning the QR code that you see on this slide. So what I'll be covering today is the configuration between LinkedIn Sales Navigator and Dynamics 365 Customer Engagement. We'll talk about data synchronization, data validation, and matching as well. So the configuration actually takes place in two places. You actually have to configure this in LinkedIn Sales Navigator, but also in Dynamics 365. So I'm going to touch on that shortly and show you where uh, that configuration is. Now, I actually got a lot of questions from people uh, about the synchronization and, and where data goes when it flows from Dynamics 365 to Sales Navigator and vice versa. A lot of people think that as soon as a connection is made on LinkedIn, this data is then going to be pushed to Dynamics 365 as, for example, a contact record or a lead record. Um, and then I had other people that said, oh, all connections that I have are going to be, I'm going to be able to, you know, have a record created in Dynamics 365. So currently at this time, that is not true. So the integration currently does not create a contact or a lead or account records in Dynamics 365, right? But this is something that's gonna be available soon and how exactly that works, we'll kinda of have to find out, but that is coming very, very soon. Now, there are some other LinkedIn records that can be synchronized in Dynamics 365, which I'll talk about uh, a little bit later as well. It's actually on my next slide. So currently what you see here is the Dynamics 365 to Sales Navigator synchronization. So if you have Dynamics 365 users who actually are seat holders in Sales Navigator, right? So that actually have Sales Navigator that license and they have CRM sync enabled, then accounts and leads will be automatically synchronized or imported, whatever you want to call that into sales navigator, because we can have, we can set up lead list, right? And then we can have, we can save contacts that we have in Dynamics 365 or leads that we have in Dynamics 365 into sales navigator. We also actually have the ability in sales navigator to configure at which stage an opportunity um, is, is, is set to push data from Dynamics 365 to Sales Navigator. So I'll, I'll show you that shortly as well. You're basically going to set your stage. What is the sales stage that, right? We're going to push data related to that opportunity, such as accounts and leads to Dynamics 365. Now keep in mind that obviously only those types of records will be imported, right? We're not going to track opportunity records in Dynamics or in Sales Navigator because we already do that in Dynamics 365. So that would kind of be useless, right? Now let's talk about Sales Navigator to Dynamics 365 right back, right? You can see here there's, there's several things that we can track in Dynamics 365 that comes from Sales Navigator. So if we're sending emails or if we're sending messages and the difference between that is an email is basically write a message to somebody that you have not connected with yet. And, and usually you have a set number of emails that you can send with Sales Navigator. And a message is just that. It's a message that you can send to somebody that you're already connected with. So you can choose to actually have those individual emails or messages or notes 
or phone calls, all of those four, to actually be synchronized back to Dynamics 365. An in-mail will be an in-mail record in Dynamics 365, and a message will be a message record. All of those are activities. Then obviously we also have notes, which is a note in Sales Navigator and in Dynamics 365. What that means is I can create a note in Sales Navigator, and then there's gonna be a little button there that allows me to save it also to Dynamics 365. And then lastly, we can also have a phone call record. This is actually when you have the Sales Navigator app installed on your mobile device. And if I, from, the, from that Sales Navigator app, make a call, I can actually have Sales Navigator create a phone call record. And again, there's gonna be a, a yes, no button there that will allow me to basically synchronize that phone call back to Dynamics 365 as an activity as well. And then you can kind of see that right on that slide underneath that, on, underneath there on the Dynamics 365 side, you can see that it says a note from Sales Navigator or a message from Sales Navigator. Now let's take a look at Dynamics 365 and let's start by the integration. So there's two different ways where you have to set up that integration. One of them is in Dynamics 365. So I'm just gonna go here and click Advanced Settings and then I can go to Settings and then Business Management and that will take me right here. And this is where, as you can see, we can manage our settings related to LinkedIn Sales Navigator integration. And if I click on that, this is a screen that then comes up. So this is the button to actually activate that LinkedIn Sales Navigator integration. And once you've done that, you can see that you can also set up a photo refresh, which allows us to get the most recent profile pictures from LinkedIn synchronized back into Dynamics 365. Obviously, CRM Sync has to be activated for that, and I'll show you in a second where that is in Sales Navigator. And then lastly, you can see here, it says here, enable LinkedIn updates. Now, this is the date of validation for Dynamics 365. And this also needs to be turned on in both applications. So not just in Dynamics 365, but also on the Sales Navigator side. And, and we'll, I'll show you that in a second as well. Now, what happens when that data validation is turned on in Dynamics 365? Uh, there's gonna be a new option set, which is called, the system name for that is msdyn underscore org change status. And the name of that field is not at company flag. That field is added to the contact entity in Dynamics 365. And the values of this dropdown field are no feedback, not at company and ignore. Now, the way that this used is that when the current company of a LinkedIn contact does not match the account the contact is related to in Dynamics 365, this particular dropdown field will be set to not add company. Now, this validation between LinkedIn and Dynamics 365, that occurs every 24 hours. And besides that option set field being added to the contact entity, it will al also be visible on the account org chart. And then on top of that, there's gonna be four new views that will be added to Dynamics 365. Two new opportunity views. One of them is called all opportunities at risk dash contact left and my opportunities at risk dash contact left. And then two contact views all contacts not a company, my contacts not a company. Now you may, you, you have to make sure that you actually add both of those views to the app because obviously otherwise you're not gonna be able to get to the, those views, right? You won't be seeing those. Okay, so that's it from the Dynamics 365 side. Now let's take a look in Sales Navigator. So. As you can see, I'm in Sales Navigator and I can go here to Admin and I can go to Admin Settings. Now you can see that I already have this set up and you don't really have to do a lot to set that up. I, I'm actually not gonna disconnect this from CRM, but the only thing you have to really do is put in part 
of the URL of your Dynamics 365 instance. Then you can see once that is set up and once your Dynamics 365 instance is connected to Sales Navigator, we have some options. It says here, do I want to sync all seat holders with CRM, which means that accounts and leads will be automatically imported to Sales Navigator for all seat holders with a matching email address in CRM. You can also set this to no. And what you have to do then, I mean, you have to do that in both instances. Once you have this configured, you then need to go to seat management. And this is actually where you're going to enable CRM sync. So you have to make sure obviously that your email address that you have related to your LinkedIn profile is the same as it is in your CRM or your Dynamics 365 instance, right? Because otherwise it won't see it. So this is, you got to make sure that you enable this CRM sync. This is what we were talking about earlier. So the only thing you really have to do is, right? You just click here on edit. You click here on enable CRM sync and it's going to tell me now, oh, I can't use that because I'm in a demo environment. But normally um, you can see here that I actually set it up successfully for myself and also for my coworker, Chris here as well. So that's what you have to do. Some other options that we have in the admin settings. You can just click on show more. Um, this is what we talked about earlier. At which stage do you, does your sales team consider an opportunity to enter your pipeline? This is where you can pick any of those stages, right? Those sales stages. And then when it enters that, right, then accounts and leads will automatically be imported for all opportunities, open opportunities that passed this stage, right? Where do you store the value of a one opportunity? So I'm probably going to store that in the actual value field, right? Then again, this really allows Sales Navigator to estimate ROI, performance, and profile deals to enhance your user experience, right? So that's kind of why we're setting that. And then this is where we can configure what data we want Sales Navigator to synchronize back to our CRM. Now, as you all know, point drive is, is gone. So I'm assuming this is going to be, um, replaced by that new functionality that LinkedIn is currently working on to replace point drive with. Uh, but here we can see if we want to synchronize in mails, messages, and or notes from LinkedIn that goes back to Dynamics 365. And then lastly, right, do we want to enable data validation? This is where we can turn that on. And you already saw on the Dynamics 365 side that we have turned it on there already. And keep in mind that data validation, validation also helps with the matching of Dynamics 365 records with LinkedIn records. Now, what is matching you might ask? So let me actually go to a contact record here and let's just open up Adrian McMillan. If I go here to LinkedIn Sales Navigator, you can see here that we have Adrian McMillan. So that's that match, right? The system automatically found Dr. Adrian McMillan and just matched my Dynamics 365 record with a LinkedIn member profile. Now, how does it do this? So these are the fields that it's going to look at to actually match the contacts, right? First name, last name, title, company, country, phone number, and the email address. And, and obviously, right, a lot of people will have several email addresses in their LinkedIn profile. We can compare that then with that email in Dynamics 365. And companies are matched this way, right? Company name, then we're going to have address, street, city, state, province, postal code, country, website, phone number, industry, and number of employees. So those are the fields that uh, it's looking at when it's actually matching those accounts. And 
you know, if, if there's a match that is not accurate, obviously users can just go ahead, go in here and say, this is not the right person. And then they can just go ahead and, and start searching for that particular person and just do a match uh, manually. And of course that works the same way here as well, right? I can just go ahead and say not the right account and that will allow me to do a manual match. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, please hit that like button. Be sure to check back again next week uh, because I'm going to do another video on LinkedIn Sales Navigator and the Dynamics 365 CE integration and this time we're really going to dive into the actual functionality of that. Thanks so much everyone. Have a great day.